These professional chefs all want to break into the top ranks of the world's culinary elite. Deciding who has the talent to cut it is MasterChef judge Greg Wallace. I'd, I'd demolish it. Absolutely demolish it. And culinary legend Michelle Rue Jr. With two Michelin stars, he's expecting perfection. It's good. I could serve that pasta very happily in my restaurant. Cooking doesn't get better than this. These four chefs have been working in professional kitchens for years, but they want to prove they can compete at their industry's highest level. I want the best cooking possible. I want to be wowed. I want the best of the best. The food I'm looking for is the truly memorable food. That is the standard I want these chefs to reach. In today's show, the professionals will be set three gruelling tests. Only the best chef will make it through to the quarter-final. In this, the first of the tests, the contestants will not be cooking for Michelle. As one of only a handful of two Michelin star chefs in the country, the four contestants will have to earn the right to cook for him. To whittle them down to the best three, he's sending in his senior sous chef, Monica, to judge them. Move it! Get that garnish on the plate now! Monica, my sous chef, has been working for me for over five years. I trust her judgment. I know that if she says it's all right, then it's good. Monica wants to determine who she'd be prepared to put in front of Michelle. Only the best three chefs will have the privilege to cook for him. The other will be going home. Right, Greg, the skills test for today is they must be able to gut and fillet this fish with four nice fillets, followed by the palate test, which would be to prepare and cook the fillets for us. They can't mess that up. They've got to be able to fill it and cook a fish, surely. Let's get these guys in and see what they make of that fish. 21-year-old Richard has been a professional for two years and is extremely focused about making it to the top. I'm just wanting to learn and wanting to do it. Got the passion and it's just what I want to do. Skill test, palate test, ten minutes, off you go. To cook for Michelle Rue Jr. I mean loads. Just to hear what he's going to say would be amazing. One minute left. That's it. Your, your time's up. Your time's up. Richard, skills test. I'm sorry. Not very professional filleting skills here, is there? Look at that. Huh? If you were in my kitchen, I swear you'd be wearing this fish now. I'm speechless. You've, you've managed to cook them. Let's have a look at that. The fish is really soft and it's falling apart. It's nicely cooked. It's gently cooked. I have a bit of bone. As a chef, my greatest fear would be to choke someone on a piece of bone. Especially place which has no bones. How do you get one in there? Richard, I can see from your face you're bitterly disappointed, but you cooked that fish very nicely. I wouldn't pack your knives up just yet, OK? Really let myself down. That doesn't represent me at all. 
can just shot to that. That was actually me doing it. Next up is 29-year-old Peter. Self-taught, he's been working in kitchens for seven years. Um, I guess my aspirations in cooking purely are to do well, really, to have a successful business. If I get rewards, if I have a get a mission star of that, perfect. Peter? Yep. Best of luck, off you go. I will um, be confident in my approach to this. Hopefully that's going to be good enough to, to get me through it. You have five minutes left, Peter. That is it. Your time's up. <laughs> what an absolute man. <laughs> It's a lot of waste there. A lot of waste. Yeah. You started off really well, and as you went along, it just got worse and worse, yeah. you know? Yeah, it did. You really need to be able to perform under pressure, especially if you get through to go and see Michelle next. Mm, yeah. Yeah? yeah? Let's uh, sample your cooking, shall we? That doesn't look very good, does it? No, not at all. Not at all. Peter, you know that to make it two Michelin standards, that presentation is a huge part of it. Yeah. So, you really need to up your game. Yeah. Your sauce is nice. It's very light. A lot of pepper. Right. I'm sorry. Very, very strong pepper on that. No, I like that creamy sauce. Looks like something's landed from Mars, but tastes very nice. Presentation, awful. Filleting, awful. Sauce, awful. I'm not very confident after, uh, after my efforts, but uh, I, hope, uh, I hope the judges see some potential and, um, and give me a chance. At only 22, Adam has been working at one of London's most prestigious hotels for the last four years. I am competitive and I think for my age, I am good at what I do. No matter how young you are, if you've got the experience behind you and you want to do something, then you can do it. Off you go. The main reason for me to enter this competition is to showcase what I can do and, and hopefully improve myself. My overall goal is to be at the top of my game and I think this could be a good step in getting towards that goal. You've got 60 seconds. That's it. That's it. Adam, filleting the fish. I thought you did a fantastic job there. Clean all the way off. I'm very happy with that. Well done. Great skill. Top draw, my friend. Should we uh, taste your fish now? What a shame, what a shame, what a shame. It's such a delicate fish and it's just way too much salt. Hmm. That fish is cooked to absolute perfection. It's just falling apart on my tongue. Nice buttery sauce and a great big smack in the gob with a bag of salt. Just disappointed that, you know, panicked and just threw it too much on there, so. Thanks very much for your efforts. I hope the judges have seen some potential in me. And maybe they can overlook the fact that I was a little heavy handed on the salt. I'm pretty sure if I do get the chance to cook again, uh, I'll be able to rectify that. Last up is 32 year old Sean, a sous chef whose passion for cooking was ignited by his chef mother. In five years' time, I'd like to be a um, head chef or maybe a chef proprietor of a successful restaurant. You ready, big fella? Yeah. Ten minutes, off you go. 
biggest nightmare today would be to go home today. I would hate to make a silly mistake that I wouldn't usually make any other day of the week. Never mind, never mind. You're finished, that's it. You started off really well and then slightly lost your nerve uh, when you nicked yourself there. Yeah. Yeah. But you managed to get the four fillets off. Mm. So well done. Let's eat your fish, shall we? Overall, the fish is nicely cooked. You made a great attempt at making a nice chive butter with it and seasoning is very good as well. Fish is very delicate, it is falling apart. All I'm getting really from that sauce is citrus lemon. There's obvious mistakes, but I think you're aware of the mistakes anyway. Oh yeah, big time, big time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bit of a mixed bag there, I sort of started well, made a wee couple of wee mis silly mistakes and then sort of tried to pull it back at the end, so. I just hope that the judge has seen the good bits they did and for forgive the mistakes. Monica, did you have a favourite of the bunch? Who really impressed you? Adam, with filleting his fish, it was very well done. There was no wastage at all. He cooked it to perfection. He made a really nice buttery sauce, lemon in there. Unfortunately, he overdid it with the salt, but I've got to say, he, he shines out like a yeah. beacon, that guy. Yeah. It really means a lot to me and, you know, there's a lot riding on it for me. Adam's in. I'd like to talk about Sean, because he filleted his fish very well until he slipped and he started to panic a little bit. Yeah. As for cooking the fish, he made a great attempt at a butter sauce. He shows that he is capable of doing this, but he needs to get his nerves under control. I think that if I get the opportunity to go win, on a, on a, I mean, I'll definitely improve on the mistakes and like, we'll make them mistakes again. We've got Adam in, we've got Sean in. We now need to decide between Richard and Peter. Um, Richard was obviously nervous. Um, he didn't fillet his fish very well. He looked like he'd been hacking at it with an axe. It was cooked nice, the, the fish, but uh, there was bone in there. I realise the nerves really can get to you and he let it destroy destroy his attempt at anything today. If I don't go through, I'd be really disappointed, but from that performance, it wouldn't surprise me. But Peter didn't do a great job of filleting either. Uh, he looked more confident, Peter. He had a smile on his face, but he, he hacked about that fish as well, the same as Richard did. It was my fault. I completely messed it up, so if I don't go through, it's, uh, I've got no one else to blame but myself. It's very tough, Greg. I couldn't have served either of those dishes to Michelle. I can see you're concerned, but you, you have to choose one. The chef that's leaving us today is Richard. Let me just tell you right now, it won't get any easier. It gets tougher. But right now, congratulations, well done. <laughs> I'm really excited about being able to cook for Michelle. Um, it should be a great honour and I'll be able to get it spot on next time, I hope. I'm chuffed, I'm really chuffed. This is the first step in the ladder, like, you know, the focus is on the next task. I'm uh, really relieved that I've got through and looking forward to cook for Michelle and I hope I can impress him with my ability, hopefully. It's day two. Peter, Sean and Adam are back. And this time they have the chance to cook for Michelle Rue Jr.
To get through to the quarterfinal, they have to show him they can deliver the precise, inspiring food expected at this highest level. In front of you, you have lamb's kidneys. You have 50 minutes to cook two different dishes using the lamb's kidneys and the ingredients in front of you. I want you to prove to us that you are great chefs in the making. 50 minutes, you know what you're doing? Off you go. Let's have some good stuff. This is a chance for the chefs to demonstrate their versatility and skill. Their larder includes bacon, cabbage, mushrooms, parsnips, bread, mustard and blue cheese. They also have a selection of plates to give Michelle a sense of their presentation skills. Now is the time for them to show off their style, to show us what they're made of. I love kidneys, but they are tricky to cook. I want to see our chefs at least make one sauce to go with a kidney dish. Something mustardy, peppery. Really bold flavours. When treated with care and with respect and sourced properly, kidneys can grace any table. The, the thrill of cooking at this level is to, to push yourself as, as far as you can go to, to test yourself against the best of the best. The impression I'd like to leave with the judges from my cooking today is just fantastic food, good flavours, just them remembering. Hi, right, Peter. Hi. You're working frenetically there. You've got a sweat up, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> what are you making? Tankotelli with, uh, with some uh, devil kidneys and some pan-fried kidneys with bacon, crust, new potatoes. There's a lot to do. You need to get cracking on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've had 15 minutes already. I'm quite excited to have the privilege to be able to cook for Michelle Rue Jr. I'm going to let him see what I can do and show him my talents. I find criticism hard to take sometimes, but as long as it's constructive, I'm sure I'll be OK. I'll be able to take it on the chin. You all right, Adam? Yeah, I'm fine. Just a little bit nervous. A little bit nervous? Yeah. Is it the Michelin-starred chef watching? <laughs> what are your ambitions? My overall ambition is to have my own restaurant one day and have my own Michelin stars. Why is that the route you want to take? I think it's just an appreciation for the, the effort and the work that you put in every day. And what's going to make the difference with your kidney dishes? I think all the simple things done right, good flavours, not too complex. So. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. I'm looking forward to eating it, Adam, as long as you do it properly. <laughs> you have 15 minutes left. Just 15 minutes. So what are you cooking for us, Sean? Uh, two kidney dishes, obviously. Um, one is a puff pastry with a little bit of parsnip puree with some red wine in the kidneys. Another one in is like a little bruschetta with some fine red tomatoes and the kidneys then cooked in cream. Mm, contrasting flavours going on here. Mushrooms and tomatoes and uh, parsnips. Oops, yeah. Interesting, interesting. What does a winner of MasterChef have to have, Sean? Dedication, good touch, good knowledge, good um, sense of taste, good all-rounder, I think. Is that you? I uh, hope so. There's no point in doing mediocre or average food. You know, if you want to put in this amount of time and commitment, you might as well serve the best as you can possibly do. You have only three minutes left! Time's up. Sean wants to show off his knowledge of combining flavours by serving kidney and cabbage bruschetta with a creamy mustard sauce. It looks quite appetising. The colours are, are OK.
kidneys need a little punch, and uh, you've delivered that in that mustard sauce. The cabbage has still got a little bite to it, the bread's crunchy. This doesn't demonstrate to me finesse. What it does say to me, though, is that you understand flavours. Those flavours straight away, acidic, mustard, strength, very good. And then into that deep, meaty, almost iron of that kidney. Perfect match. His second dish, a puff pastry tart with kidneys and parsnip puree in a red wine and red currant jelly sauce, needs to show finesse as well as flavour. The parsnip puree is sweet and silky smooth. You've bound the kidneys and the bacon in a sauce of red currant jelly and uh, red wine. It's brave, it's innovative, and it works. For me, it definitely works. Um, it is an unusual amalgamation of flavours. I can't wait to get into it. But it, it, it does look scruffy. It's a very unusual combination, and it does work. Does it work because you have a wonderfully creative chef's mind, or does it work because you got lucky? When I went to taste it, it was like that split second of, I hope they like this. But um, I was confident with what I had cooked, and I was confident with the flavours that were going to work together. 22-year-old Adam hopes to demonstrate high-end cooking with his kidney and mushroom bruschetta in a brandy and blue cheese sauce. It looks good, colours are great. Uh, you've presented the food in odd numbers, which always works better visually. So there are five half tomatoes, three pieces of kidney, pleasing to the eye. The kidneys are well cooked. I'm not sure about this sauce. It's quite, quite aggressive, quite strong. A hint of blue cheese would have been nice. That's, that's just a little bit too powerful for me. I understand completely what uh, Chef's saying, the amount of blue cheese. Actually, I like it. I'd happily eat that and, uh, and pay the bill at the end. Adam's second dish is pan-fried kidneys on top of fondant potatoes with a side of creamed bacon and cabbage. Presentation, the symmetry, it's, it's dainty. It looks as if the chef has taken care of putting it on the plate. It shows an understanding. Your kidneys are cooked well. Potatoes are delicious. It's got lovely buttery flavour and thyme flavour. Very good. But your cabbage is, is well over seasoned. I think you've got a great dish here. It's just that little bit of seasoning. What a shame. What a crying shame. The textures are absolutely lovely. In your mouth, it's all creamy and soft, and you get a little bit of firmness on the potato. Lovely, lovely flavours. Too much salt. At first, I was happy with the dish. The combinations of flavours worked really well, but if one little element of a dish is wrong, then the whole thing is ruined. So that's quite downheartening and disappointing, really. Peter has served handmade pasta with kidneys and a creamy mustard sauce. Well-cooked kidney. The cream mustard sauce as well is good. The pasta's well-cooked. You should be proud of that. I am, thank you, yeah. I, I could serve that pasta very happily in my restaurant. Yeah, that, that's, that's good. That, no, that's not good, that's very good. <laughs> that's, that's a good lunch in that bowl. A lunch people would be prepared to pay for. Well done. For his second dish, Peter has made sautéed kidneys with tomatoes and crushed potatoes in a walnut vinaigrette. Visually, it's not quite right. It's not singing out to me. Your kidneys are very pink. I could eat them, but I know a lot of people that wouldn't. Sure, OK. Overall, I'm not bowled over by the dish. It, it's not something that I would really want to sit down and eat. Peter, all of your energies went into your other dish. This is an afterthought.
an amalgamation of different flavours, a blend, a cocktail, if you like, is what we're looking for. What I've got here is I've got a flavour of the kidney and a flavour of bacon. It's not a whole dish. The second dish was pretty much a bit of an experiment, um, which didn't really pay off, unfortunately. There's some good cooking in here, good cooking. You take a break, we'll get you back in soon for the next round. Off you go. I'm excited for the next round, I really am. These guys can cook. All three of them have delivered really punchy, good flavours, good skills. I think it looks very, very promising. I'm not sure about Sean's presentation, but I really do like his flavours. I want to see more cooking from a man who can bring all of those disparate ingredients together and make them work. But it was not fine dining. Sean's going to have to prove to us in the classic recipe test that he understands presentation. I really want to get through to the quarterfinals. I mean, I'm going to make sure I give it 110% this afternoon. I'm impressed with Adam, really impressed. I thought the food looked the kind of food that you would serve in a fine dining restaurant. But flavour-wise, I thought it was too strong in the blue cheese. The kidneys in a circle around the cabbage, another great dish. But the cabbage was over-seasoned, and that, for me, really just was... It was too much. I definitely think my cooking ability is there, just whether I, I can pull it all together and stay calm and finish everything off as I should do. Mmm, Peter. One quite shabby dish and one really good pasta dish. The sauce was good, the kidneys were perfectly cooked as well. That was a good bowl of pasta. His other dish wasn't actually really a dish. It was some ingredients lining up on the plate. I really need to go into this afternoon and, and produce two great dishes, and um, I'm determined to do that. As far as I can see, there's no reason why any one of these three can't be a quarter-finalist. It's going to be won and lost now in the classic recipes. Without understanding the classics, you can go nowhere as a chef. Do these chefs understand the basics necessary to take them to the next step? In front of you, you have a beautiful piece of salt cod to make the famous brandade de Nîmes. We also want you to make Madeleine with a honey sabayon. One hour, 20 minutes. At the end of this, one of you will be a quarter finalist. Cook very well. Best of luck. There is not a great chef cooking anywhere who doesn't have a good grounding in the classics. It is absolutely essential. Branda de Nîmes is a puree of salt cod, olive oil, milk and cream. The city of Nîmes in the south of France is famous for its brandade. It should be unctuous and smooth, but still have a texture to it. You can't get away from the fact that it will be salted, but it mustn't be over-salted. It's usually served as a starter, so it has to be small and delicate. It's all about presentation and the accompaniments. Maybe a little bit of salad, some crostini, fried bread. Outside of the Mediterranean, this dish isn't known that well. Are our chefs going to have any idea of what they're supposed to be making for us? The second classic is madeleines, served with a honey sabayon. Madeleines are French cakes famous for their distinctive shell-like shape. They're traditionally flavoured with orange or lemon water. You find madeleines all over France. They are France's most loved cake. We want our madeleines served with a beautiful honeyed sabillon. Quoi, what a treat! Sabillon is made from egg yolks, sugar and masala wine. I want to see the sabillon served in a glass or a bowl. I don't want to see the madeleines swimming in my sabillon. OK, Peter, have you made uh, this salt cod dish before? Uh, no, never. Never? No, never. Well, how did you feel when you uh, heard the dishes announced? Not good. <laughs> I think I probably would have rather anything else. However, I will endeavour to give it my best and see how it goes. Peter doesn't know what 
the salt cod dish is about, but does he have the knowledge as a chef to be able to cook this properly? You've had 30 minutes already. 50 minutes left. All right, Sean, how are we doing? Doing well, doing good. Do you understand the recipes? I've made the dessert before, but I haven't made the, the cod. What do you think we expect from you now, Sean? Improve my presentation from this morning and cook the dishes to the best of my ability. Not easy, is it, Master it's Chef? It's not easy, Master Chef, no. <laughs> Sean's struggling with his brandad. He's still got big lumps of fish in there. He's got to really concentrate on presentation to get anywhere near the quarterfinal. You're halfway! You've got 40 minutes left! Adam. Yes, Chef. You were very heavy-handed with your seasoning in the first round. You've now been given salt cod. Um, well, I definitely won't be seasoning it anymore, that's for sure. Do you really want to win this? I wouldn't have entered if I, if I didn't want to win it and didn't think I stood a chance of winning it. And you think you've got a really good chance? As good as anybody else. I can't see why not. There's a certain irony here that Adam is heavy-handed with the salt, yet he's making a dish from salt cod. He's got to just leave the seasoning alone. We know he can present food, but can he present a dish that he's never actually seen before? You've got just over a minute. You've got to get stuff on the plates. Time's up! Time's up! With a quarter-final place at stake, the chef's classic dishes need to reach the standard Michelle requires. First to be scrutinised is their Branda de Nîmes. Sean, you first. This is more of a salad dish. You've hidden the essential element, the salt and cod. In fairness, it does look appetising, but it's not what I was expecting. That's not bad at all. A traditional brandade de Nîmes has got that texture. It's not too greasy. That's a, a very, very good effort. Well done. It is light and fresh and lovely colours. Let's have a go. It's salt and it's olive oil. I like the crunch of the leaves on there as well. Sean, seeing as you've never eaten one, never seen one, I mean, that's nothing short of miraculous. Your turn, Adam. Adam, lovely presentation. I like the red endive there, bright colours, contrasting the creamy white salt cod. There is one mistake here. The brandad has the right texture, yet it is very oily, very greasy. Not particularly nice to eat. I really love those flavours you've got in there. I really like the crunch of the red chicory. But as soon as you put it in your mouth, your mouth fills up with grease. That's a shame. That's a real, real shame. Righto, Peter, you next. The consistency visually looks OK. The colour looks OK. Uh, one thing, though, that the bread does look a bit thick. It looks like a doorstep. I think that was my interpretation of it. I was going for like a bistro, uh, rustic, snacky sort of. It is a rustic uh, dish at its origins, uh, 
but you know, we're trying to see if you guys understand just that little bit more. Texture's good, smooth, yet you can still feel the strands of the fish and the flakiness is there, but um, the bread's far too thick. Mm, yeah. It is salty. You'd probably do a gallon of beer by the end of it, uh, but you would finish it. I'm really impressed, but uh, we have another dish to go. So can you take those away and bring in your Madeleines and your Savions, please? It's the last chance for the chefs to impress the judges. Sean, you first. I think that looks great. I like the cocktail glass and I like the lovely fruit compote at the bottom. I think that's well presented. Taste-wise, that, that's good. That is very good. I like that fruit compote at the bottom, which gives it that sharpness, good contrast. Your madeleines are slightly overcooked, but yeah. I think you've upped your game here. You've proved to us, I think, that you can present food well. Mm. Light, slightly sticky, bit of sharper fruit at the bottom. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd demolish it. Absolutely demolish it. It was a good feeling when Michelle said it was up to the game. You know, it was good to see that he had recognised that I had taken his comments from this morning and worked, and worked on them. Adam, this is your one. The Madeleine it's got a nice flavour to them. A little bit of orange in there, I think. Yeah. Mm. Good. Did you put caster sugar in there? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit grainy. It's the caster sugar that hasn't quite melted. It's a good savoir, very good, but uh, I think you're better than that. I like the look of your dish. I think it looks great. It looks modern, well presented. Hmm. It's a it's a lovely texture. It still feels quite light. The fruit at the bottom is a nice idea, but it's grainy, so it's not great when you bite down. It was an honour to be able to cook for Michelle today. Um, however, I wish that I'd been able to get everything right for him and be able to impress him that little bit more. Peter, I'm. Not sure that the Madelines should be swimming in the Sabayon. Saying that, it does look very pretty. What's in the bottom? Is that just... Yeah, they're slightly stewed strawberries as well. I'm not sure if it is the stewing of the strawberries or if it's the Sabayon that's not quite cooked enough and split. But, right. well... OK. Mmm. 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 Very good, Madeline. It's crusty on the outside, the right depth of flavour. The madeleines are a really nice texture beside the stickiness of all that sabion. Uh, but I'm very concerned about a lump of raw egg floating about at the bottom. I've enjoyed watching you guys work today. I'll tell you one thing, this is going to be a tough judging decision. You go out and get yourselves a cup of tea. We'll get you back in as soon as we can, but I'll tell you what, it is not going to be quick. Off you go, guys. Nice guys, actually. This is not going to be easy. We've got three chefs here who have got an abundance of skill, good taste buds, but there have been mistakes. These guys today are having ups and downs in, in equal measure. You look at Adam, absolutely shone in the versatility test. His first dish uh, was a picture. It was beautiful. For me, the sauce was a bit too cheesy, but I thought that was a very good, accomplished dish. Even though Adam made mistakes, he was head and shoulders above the others up to the halfway point. But Adam, in the classic recipe test, just, just fell apart. I mean, we had so much grease and oil in his brand, Dad. But he is better than that. He is definitely better than that. I think overall, certain elements of my cooking and the way that I work will have impressed the judges. 
However, I think at every stage I've let myself down with little things. Sean's versatility test, his first dish was uh, beautifully cooked, kidneys in the mustard sauce. It was bold, it was big, but it was good. He then put the most unusual amalgamation of um, ingredients together. Uh, kidneys, parsnip puree, red currant jelly. He pulled it off flavour-wise, but that pastry case was scruffy. It was still rough and it was heavy, it was big. It was not refined. At the halfway point, we said, good flavours, but he's got to present us some attractive plates of food. He did. His sabayon was uh, light, it was unctuous, and his madeleines were ever so slightly overcooked. But it looked good. I hope that I've done enough today. I mean, I've worked hard and I've concentrated what I've done. Uh, I've got some negative comments this morning, but I've learned from them. Peter in the versatility test gave us a lovely bowl of pasta. I thought that was really good, and the effort that he put into that really shone through. And then he gave us an afterthought of some kidney and bacon and some unseasoned potatoes. <laughs> so what we wanted from him was, was, was consistency. He did manage to make the brand ad, and he actually made it quite well, but he uh, decided to serve it on great big chunks of bread. His sabillon uh, didn't quite work. It had egg floating about at the bottom, and he decided to put his madeleine into the sabillon. But it looked funky, looked fun, and desserts should bring a smile to your face, and that certainly did bring a smile to my face. Made me happy. I, I'm fairly, fairly pleased with some of the comments. I certainly understand the criticisms and I certainly know where I've gone wrong. So, I mean, it's up to the judges really now. There's an abundance of skills between all three of them. But what I'm looking for is all of those skills in just one of them. Make a decision, Michelle. You have to make a decision. And the chef going through to the next round is... Sean. Well done, Sean. <laughs> I'm well done. <laughs> Being given the opportunity to cook for Michelle Reeve was fantastic. I'm just only disappointed with myself, really, for not cooking what I certainly can cook. I always try and strive for perfection, and there's a saying that goes, you strive for perfection knowing you'll never get there. Today I didn't do that, so I'm not really surprised to be going home. I'm delighted, I'm delighted we got through the whole process. It's still a wee bit shocked, mate. I'm over the moon, we threw like. Sean will be back for the quarter-final to battle it out for the title of professional master chef. <laughs>